This is a photograph I took in Kingsley Water Park last uh, weekend. And it's a simple composition, You've got a very simple sky, so it's mainly cloud. Little darker clouds here, you can use um, Lizarin Crimson and Payne's Grey. We've got a little bit of blue, just use the ultramarine. Use the white of the paper for the uh, the white clouds. And then we've got a bit of, lots of trees on the horizon line there. Nice few reflections there. And a little bit of foreground. This, I took this from uh, inside one of the bird hides. So we've got the usual um, palette here. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Always use the same three brushes. This is my uh, large eight. You can see I can't even get a straight edge now with this. You can see how all the hairs are falling out. I'm going to have to buy a new one. But it'll still do for the time being. Got the three quarter inch flat and a number three rigger. Um, if you're wondering what this Bob Ross painting knife, I've started using this for um, doing like boats and in harbour scenes, all the, the masts. You get some really, you can get really get it nice and thin instead of using the uh, the rigger. I'll try and do a harbour scene demo at some stage soon. Got the water jar with a nice lip that takes off a lot of the excess water, like so. And then I've got my tea towel drying at the top of the easel, which I just wipe it on then, just take the rest of the uh, the water off the brush. Same paper I always use, 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour. It weighs 130 pounds. And tissue to hand if I want to uh, lift off any paints. Never bother with artist quality. I, j I just use the uh, Cutman watercolour budget range. It's student quality, but it, it does the job for me. This one here is raw sienna. Probably I use this colour probably more than any other. The uh, the lemon yellow as well with the greens along with the ultramarine. And I mean, you know, these reds, like the alizarin crimson, and the other one, it's here somewhere, the light red over there, they, they last they last forever. I mean, I hardly ever have to top up the light, the light red on here. And the uh, same goes with the alizarin crimson. There's uh, some masking fluid over here, but I haven't used it for literally years. I'll try and find ways around it to be honest with you. It, it's, I, it, it stinks, I just can't be bothered to wait for it to dry. I just ain't got the patience. So there's my uh, reference picture over there on the laptop. Uh, let's see what I can uh, do on here. So I'm just putting the uh, clean water on. See, um, I, I changed the water, I only changed the water once a day to be honest with you. I could do half a dozen paintings I just use the same water it doesn't have to be clean I mean you, you can see from the palette how clean you have to keep things I'd, I'd probably recommend for a beginner to try and keep the colours clean and, and separate them and just so you can see how they react but once once you know how the colours react with one another the, um, and you know what to expect pretty much you don't have to keep it in pristine white condition the palette you can get away with uh, quite a lot of mess as you can see I have on there so anyway that was raw sienna going on and now I'm just going to brush in just a bit of, a bit of blue there's a bit of blue on this side and then reflect it down into the water the horizon's about a third of the way up so I'm just pulling that all the way across that's all I need for that now there was those little clouds, the darker clouds, so I'm just going lizard and crimson, Payne's grey for those ones and then just a little light, just very light. That's all I'm going to do for that. I'm just going to reflect just a little bit into the water. That's all I'm going to do for that. So I didn't need to clean the brush then. I don't know why I did it, but I'm going back into all those uh, 
sky colours again. And I'm going to put in the distant trees next. So using the same colours as the sky, that'll push it right back into the distance. So again, just I've never got a lot of water, see I can always do that. I can always tip the pallet upside down and you'll never get water dripping off it. Just enough water to hold the airs together, that's all you need for the most most um, applications. Um, so third of the way up and I'm just going to start in those distant trees. I'm trying to vary the colour slightly as I go along. Now the papers, actually, while I've still got the colour on the brush, I did forget to pull down some reflections while before the paper dries. A little darker area just to get a bit of variation. Again, just pull the pull those reflections down while the colour's on the brush. Now I'm just going to pull the paper sides. Swap. Although it's only fairly cheap paper. And it's only £130, the standard gender is about 140 but Because I, I wet it all over first, I can get away with it. Not, you don't end up with that sort of cockling when it all crinkles and looks horrible. It just stretches evenly. So, still haven't cleaned the brush, but now, because we're coming slightly forward now, I just want it slightly stronger, slightly less water. More pounds, and then I'm going to start a bear there. Just not forgetting the reflections as I'm going along. Just about the paper's almost dry now. You can see the difference between when it's dried or almost dried and when it's still wet and see how softer the edges are there compared to where when it's dry you'll get hard edges just the same you get hard edges putting, a, putting them on this way um, it is autumn so there's, there's not much green green anywhere there's not even a bit more water on the brush And do a few this way as well. And again, I'm forgetting the reflections. So that's that little uh, corner of the scene done. More on the reflections down there. We got there now. I can just about there was there, there is the odd little it's the odd little building here and there. It's not quite it's more in the background now that is, isn't it? Um still surprised you in. No, I, sh I should have put that in first. There's a couple of buildings there, but I've uh, I think I've shot my bolt with that. What I'll do is okay, I'll, I'll ignore the buildings. I'll just carry on with the a few more of these. Clean the brush now, because it's all it's, it's all starting to look a bit muddy now. The uh, the colours. 
actually I didn't really get much further. 